Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shredder 33 with another Exhibition Match stream. So I'm gonna have a rather, well, a new map, actually. Fractured Face. This is going to be Steel Blue versus Ivan D, but first we'll go over the map because, well, I actually haven't really seen this map much. This map, as we clear the scene, it's quite flat. It's a very flat map. It's focused on, well, flat terrain and water, so hovercraft works nicely. Most metal extractors, actually, very metal extractor heavy. My goodness, this is going to be a map. Why do people play? Okay, this is a new map. I'm not sure why it's featured for 1v1, to be quite honest. Because, as you can clearly see, there are a lot of metal extractors. Perfect for team games. For 1v1, I'm not really sure. This is going to explode very quickly. Both players using hovercraft, which makes sense, given the layout of the map. And other than that, I I don't know. I mean, clearly... There is going to be pretty much this entire area here for each player. A little surprised Ivan D was a bit further back. Very defensive opening, where Steel Blue is opening up considerably closer to the center. But yeah, let's just see how it plays out, because honestly, this is not a map I'm familiar with. If anyone on, in chat is familiar with this map, please let me know if there's anything I need to know, any details. Anything in particular. So, Steel Blue going for very quick construct. Ivan D is going for opening dagger, which makes a lot of sense. And Steel Blue... Wow, they're being very economical. I mean, they... If, it makes sense, given the size of the map. I mean, that dagger's gonna take a while to get over there. Especially being that it's gone around the long way. Which is a little surprising. I'm not sure why they... Oh, wait. The start boxes for this map might be on the sides. Now that I think about it. Like I said, I'm not super familiar with this map, so... Offhand, I don't remember exactly what the start boxes were. But if they are to the side, that would make sense that they just did this. And we happen to have a corner start, but I think... Looking at it, that they'd probably be... Okay, sorry, I'm going to double check where the start boxes are, because this is actually bothering me. The start boxes are... If this page load. Start boxes are... Vertical. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. Steel Blue is... Starting out, but Ivan D was Steel Blue starting at the same level of economic power. Like I said, Steel Blue a bit further ahead. I have a bit of a harder time defending this back area, especially as this dagger will come in. There is a Lotus, so that's one thing that does exist. But that's not along the path that dagger's going to take. And then dagger along a more direct path because it realizes where things are and why is the... Okay, for some reason my selection settings are not being respected. I don't know why. Anyway, that's better. Wait a sec, that means selection shapes works in this engine. Oh, cool, I actually didn't realize that. There's been a problem with the selection shapes widget for a while in the new engine, and apparently it actually works now. Which is... kind of neat. Now, come to think of it, maybe I should just switch to that. I mean, selection outline looks pretty cool, but at the same time, it messes up the compression. It just... The black outlines work fine, but H64 just gets messed up when the outlines change color, so I might actually change that. Not right now, though, but maybe later. Yeah, that might actually be a good idea. Anyway, Steel Blue now going for a bit of a counter-harassment. This is not going to work out very well at all, though. Unfortunately for, I, unfortunately for Steel Blue, Ivan D already has their dagger set up, so that's pretty well defended. Ivan D actually expanding quite a lot more aggressively, too. Steel Blue, despite the fact that they have... Although they are sending their commander back, which... Not sure why they're doing that with a battle commander. I think what they're trying to do is make sure that they don't get attacked from behind, as they just did. But their commander is a battle com. I mean, their commander should be going forward. These guys should be going in the back. These quills here, those are the ones that should be going back and actually dealing with this. But anyway, Steel Blue switching over to Mesa very quickly to deal with just crowd control for these daggers, so that's going to be at least dealt with. But still, Ivan D, from the looks of it, they are going to be just taking the center very quickly. They have the back, they have the top right corner. They've got that dealt with. They are going to take the center, and that's going to be a big problem for Steel Blue. The only upside is that there are a lot of there are a lot of attack paths. This map is very open, so Steel Blue will have a lot of ways of getting in. Won't have a lot of units with which to do so, though. They are just like, at this point, Ivan D is a critical mass, at least against other daggers, of daggers. Against a mace, not so much. The mace will have no problem. The mace will get rid of them, and Steel Blue 
However, it needs to actually get the mace in position. That's the one problem. The Steel Blue, what does Steel Blue know right now? Steel Blue is vaguely aware that there are daggers around here somewhere. And they remain only vaguely aware of this fact as the daggers move in. Yeah, that's not going to work out too well. So Ivan D basically has free reign over the entire center of the map right now. There's nothing Steel Blue can do. Ivan D taking the north side as well, just not taking all the mexes, oddly enough. All of these mexes are worth it, except the center mexes are all plus 1.4, the rest are plus 1.9. But that's the thing, that all the side mexes are equally valuable, so yeah, go for it. Oh, apparently this is... Okay, looking at the chat, apparently this is a 0k Dota map. That's interesting. I guess that actually explains a lot of the way that this place... This way is... I know, this is set up... Yeah, I guess the three lane setup with the... With the sea instead of a jungle? I don't know. This is a silly map, though. For standard 0k play. This is just odd. But I wanted to show it off because it was a new map. It's a different thing. So at least there's a bit of variety. I don't know if people are getting sick of the fact that it's always often the same set of maps, like the same dozen or so maps. Granted, I do want to make sure that at some point, once the Steam release happens, that we are in fact using the same dozen or so maps in general for ladders, because that's just what RTS games do. So, get a nice meta built up on a handful of maps rather than playing through where there's maybe a dozen or so that are commonly play, but there's still like a hundred that are in the pool that you have to keep in mind. Oh, yeah. Scuzzy wants to see the underwater height map. It's pretty basic. Basically, it's just very nearly flat, actually. There's bridges going in, and then there's a bit of a hills around this area here. That's about it. There, there's really not much. Like, amphibs would be able to easily go in and out, but hovercraft, well, they just go on top of the water. Yeah, this map doesn't have a whole lot of height variety. Well, I guess I could just show you the water right now, anyway. Yeah, so there's not much to be said. It's... The hype variety in this map is pretty minimal. I think the hovers actually can go... Can they go in here? Yeah, they can. They can't go up these areas here, but these smaller hills... Yeah, the hovercraft can actually go up and down them. So that's good to know. Basically, this entire area is hover pathable. Hovercraft can go everywhere here. And Geo Plant from Ivan D. Like, Ivan D is just building up and building up, and they are way ahead. At this point, they're twice the economy of Steel Blue. Steel Blue has barely expanded at this point. Their commander has been in the back, building up. Okay, Steel Blue, you're not playing a team game. You're playing 1v1. 1v1, typically getting more metal extractors is good. Because this is, like, fusion reactor with all these defend or all these lotuses and defenders. That is team game strategy, as far as I understand. Like, large team games. This is not a large team game. This is one-on-one, -on -one, and Ivan D is in a much better position to handle this. I'm not sure why Steel Blue is not expanding very much. I really am not. This is bizarre. Steel Blue is going for an air switch, but they don't have the resources to really support it. Not while also getting these ground units. The only upside for them is they have a bunch of maces, but then again, Ivan D's already kind of called that, gotten halberds instead. Although the halberds won't last too long. The scorchers... Sorry. Scalpels. Scalpels would be the way to go. That would be the counter. Halberds are handy, but they aren't the counter. And I don't see any scalpels coming up. No scalpels are currently in play. A bunch of deck. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Those are halberds. Those are all halberds. There are no scalpels coming up. That kind of sucks. And Ivan D's commander is basically, well, not dead, but forced to dig into the ground. Forced to dig a hole and hide. Because that is what commanders do. When threatened, they dig a hole and hide. Oh, well, that really can be done at that point. Anyway, Ivan D, they are gonna lose a lot here. So I'll give that I'll give that to Steel Blue. Steel Blue does have a very powerful harassment attack going in here. Ivan D, however, realizing Steel Blue is probably not too much in their base. They are enough in their base, I think. There are a couple maces that should be enough to deal with these daggers. It'll depend entirely on the angle the daggers come in at. But at the same time, Steel Blue actually looks like they will be okay. This geo plant is completely unharmed. Like, there's no way you can harm it. Because it'd have to be terraformed or it'd have to be bombed. And other than that, yeah, that actually really gets in the way. Mace is basically going through the graveyard here to try to get to that Lotus. 
And to get rid of these solar plants, then that opens up the area far better. But yeah, like I said before, this is... Actually, this is pathable. I don't know why the mesas aren't going up here. They should be able to. Regardless, Steel Blue managed to get a fair bit of damage in. I have Medea, however, with their own air switch. That's going to be tough. And Steel Blue just now getting the airplane factory up. They have not built anything out of it. That's the thing. Ivan D just has such a massive economy advantage. They can easily build this up. The caretakers with the airplane factory, they just have everything they need to build up everything they need to win at this point. Just to bomb everything out and then rush in with their daggers as they're about to do. They like, bomb out these lotuses, rush in with the daggers, tear everything apart. The maces... How many maces are there? There are... Well, it doesn't really matter because the maces are going to get bombed out as well. That's going to just lead to death. Everywhere. In fact, the Lotuses could probably be taken out by the Daggers as it is, without the Bombers. But the Bombers are going to come in for extra support, because why not? And the Maces are completely out of position. Swift's coming in to try to deal with the Ravens. That will get rid of a couple Ravens, but even that's not necessarily enough. Yeah, down goes one. The other one's going to come up pretty soon, but even then, it's still not great. Another Raven goes down, but... Another Lotus goes down, so Steel Blue is in a really tight position right now. Ivan D, they still have the entire north side of the map. They are doing great. Steel Blue is expanding slowly but surely along the south side of the map, but that's not enough. So Ivan D basically has this game. Like, Steel Blue's only chance with that Mace Assault, and that Mace Assault got to the main base. There wasn't a whole lot to stop it. Not a whole lot of static defenses, nothing really strong that could have stopped it, except the Ravens. And at this point, Swifts are coming in from... Actually, Hawks are from Ivan D. That's, that's their counter. Which should work just fine. These Swifts, they might be able to get rid of a couple Hawks here and there, but they're basically going to go down. Well, to be fair, Swifts do beat Hawks with larger numbers, so it really comes down to positioning. And Steel Blue, getting lucky at first, the first few Hawks are coming in one at a time. But still losing a lot of Swifts in the process. Still only a four left. The Swifts getting distracted by Ravens. That is not going to work out very well for Steel Blue. I think at this point they are basically going to lose all their Swifts. They have to escape. Like, three Swifts at this point. And pushing almost all their money into... 25 metal into that factory for Swifts. At least trying to. It looks like it is fairly evenly split, though. Yeah, 15 and 15. So they are basically... Barely pushing in enough to get more Swifts in time. It's not going to work out too well. Another Hawk goes down, but now at this point, Ivan D has enough Hawks. They have no problems here. Ivan D has more than enough Hawks to deal with this. But at this point, it basically, it's going to be Ivan D just rushing in. Steel Blue does have the maces, which is going to be a problem. And Reclaim right now would be... Okay, Reclaim is necessary right now. If Steel Blue doesn't Reclaim, they have no chance of getting back. If they do Reclaim, they have some chance with the right amount of harassment. If they're harassing with these maces at the same time, they're running up here, tearing apart this, these metal extractors at the same time as they're defending against this... And expanding and reclaiming. Like expanding along the south here and reclaiming here. Then they'd be fine. But yeah, that's a lot of multitasking. And Steel Blue is not demonstrating their particularly good multitasking abilities right now. I'm not sure what Steel Blue's multitasking skill is. But they are 1880 yellow, so I imagine that it's probably not bad. Because right now, they're not demonstrating it. Which is rather unfortunate. See, I don't know what these maces are doing here. And the daggers along the south, I mean, stopping that expansion from happening. There is some expanding going on along the southeast, which is good. But still, that's not great overall. I mean, Ivan D basic... How many, how many ravens do they have? Five ravens? Actually, not bad. They're losing their raven numbers. They are gaining a lot of hawks, though. And if they get too close to those flails, of which there are many... Well, four flails. Four flails is more than enough to get rid of the hawks. It's, it basically, there's a no-fly zone. Problem, of course, being these daggers, which... Actually, I think that that's most of the daggers. Not really a whole lot of new daggers coming up. Scalpels are coming up. There we go. Ivan D finally going for the scalpels to get rid of the maces. And finally, still be moving the maces over to the north to get rid of all this stuff here. That... That's good to see that happen eventually, but still, it could have happened about five minutes ago. Oh, which occurs to me, I... Sorry, I'm, I apologize for the lack of the timer in the top right corner of the map. I'll have that up for the next game. I had to accidentally re I accidentally reset my settings, and it's an engine setting. I'll have that for the next one. I think I might be able to actually do that now, though. No, clock is two Cs. 
There we go. Okay, cool. There we go, so yeah. 13 minutes in, so yeah, about 8 minutes in, it could have probably come in. How many flails are there so far? Half a dozen flails, not bad! They do need mace support, though the daggers are coming in very strong, and that's going to be a problem once they come in. That is going to be a massive problem. But it looks like the flails did manage to retreat, but there's nothing to support them. There's one mace. There's, well, a bunch of maces and... actually, no, they're all dead here. This is why it should have happened earlier when all the other attacks were going on and Ivan D was distracted. At this point, Steel Blue has nothing to really distract Ivan D with. So I think Ivan D is going to take this. Steel Blue moving in with a Mesa to try to get rid of these daggers. They're going to get run out of the way. And they're just going to leave, probably. Although, maybe not. They have they have escape routes. They can go all the way over here. They can go... Oh, they can't really go back, but it looks like... No, they're going to fight directly! Losing many of their number to the maces, about half a dozen go down right away for free. But they do take that escape route. They are going along here. Still, it doesn't matter. Ivan D is so far ahead. I don't even understand why Steel Blue let that happen, but yeah, they did. Which is really unfortunate. But that's a thing that happens. So yeah. Ivan D is... Now they're losing all their maces. The scalpels are up. The maces are dead. No daggers or anything to deal with the scalpels. Or halberds to deal with the scalpels. They're just... They're dead. And Raven, despite the flails, Ravens managed to take out the mace as well. That is just insult to injury. How many flails? That is a dozen flails! Even a dozen flails isn't enough. That is unfortunate. I expected this to be a much more even game. Gotta be honest. But yeah, surprisingly, Steel Blue has not been expanding. They, were, I think they were trying to do a defensive mace rush, like defend a bit, get enough resources to build up a bunch of maces, and then just push them forward and tear everything apart. But that didn't work out. So at this point, basically it's just a matter of Ivan D sending in their dozen or so ravens, bombing everything out. Okay, they can't do that. I mean, their dagger, combination of daggers, ravens, scalpels, like, they have enough forces, I think, that position properly and used properly, they would win. It's just dagger against flail. Scalpel against... Oh, nice. Dagger's coming for the scalpels, but... Is that going to be enough? I don't think... No, that's not. That is not going to be enough at all. One of the scalpels is going to die, I think. Nope, not even. Daggers go down. So never mind. What I said about daggers, I meant halberds. Halberds are the choice units when dealing with scalpels. Daggers, unless they're in very large numbers, will not help much. They can kind of help, but you need the critical mass. Otherwise, it won't work. And, well, this is why the flails are going to be... Well, rather, the bombers are going to have a hard time. But even then, the hover factor goes down. Not much can be done to deal with this. I mean, all the ravens are going to go down, but that was totally worth it. The entire factory is gone. And that's basically it. All those ravens dead, but now that factory's dead. There is still the air factory. Now all the resources are going into air factory are going to swifts. But at this point, Ivan D, they have such a massive economic and military advantage, they can just rush in. I mean, the maces are a bit scary. I don't, they could probably take on the maces directly with those. The daggers could probably kill the maces at this point. Okay, Skazi pointing out that 600 metal factory is only worth two 300 metal ravens. That's a point, but at the same time, denying production for that long? Like, denying production for probably a minute or so? That's still a lot, especially when your opponent is behind. It's more like it puts the nail in the coffin. Oh, I suppose with regards to that, if three scalpels die and this factory, does, three scalpels are worth this factory, I suppose, in the same vein. And yet, aren't going for it. That factory's not dying yet. What the heck? Yeah, the fellow's going out, and that is basically. Oh, right, I guess it does show me the selected units commands. Or ally selected units. That's a thing. And now, is this going to die? This does die. The air factory goes down, the hover factory is still up. But still, at this point, there's not a whole... There's, are there any air units right now for... Nope, Steel Blue has no air units. Steel Blue has no territory. Ivan D could just win pretty much right now. They have a three-fold military advantage, they have a five-fold economic advantage. 
know, I think Kane has a point when they fast forward through the replays because, well, forget it. The winner is pretty obvious. At this point, I have indeed probably just they're regrouping. Not confident they can take things. Are they really that underconfident? Yeah, they have no radar on the front lines. They have no idea whether or not they'd be able to see what's going on. They have no way of seeing what's going on. They have no way of easily knowing. Oh yeah, by the way, you could just rush in here, but it doesn't matter. Steel Blue throws in the towel, realizes there's no way out of this. Okay. So that is... That was a game. There'll be another one in just a moment. It'll be a game from the Aquanim and Snuggle Base, also formerly known as Flaccid. It'll be on Avalanche, and it'll be up in just a moment. Hopefully it'll be a bit better than this last game, which was really, really uneven. Very surprising, too, given the LO ratings. I, I don't even know how that happened. Maybe it's just the map was unfamiliar. That's the only thing that comes to mind. So that'll be up in just a moment. Stay tuned for that.